The movie begins with the most ancient biblical occurrence about Lucifer being thrown out of heaven. Following a rebellion led by him against God, he is struck down by Archangel Michael to a place underground and bound to a large rock sealed with Michael's own sword. Lucifer scoffs at Michael and warns of his return upon earth as an equal to God. It is said that the place where Lucifer fell has been converted into a large hilly villa where his worshippers dream about his return. The scene shifts to Turin in Italy, and we meet Laura, who is an art student. She tries to convince a professor to publish her article, which describes religious beliefs about good and evil as false. Although the professor refuses on grounds of it being too controversial for his country, she persists. Finally, the professor pulls a Sigma male routine and she runs away. She then meets up with an Italian priest called Marconi, who gives her an entry card and then proceeds to take her on a tour of the museum section of a cathedral. Inside, Marconi talks about the museum receiving the Shroud of Jesus, the one he was buried and resurrected in. And it is said that some of his divine DNA was left on the Shroud. Marconi then proceeds to take her down a hall to another latest arrival, which depicts the defeat of Lucifer by Archangel Michael. They briefly discuss the concept of good and evil and unable to bear Laura's arrogance, leaves her to her artwork. As she sits down to draw the sculpture, she hears a voice behind her calling her name, but turns around to find nobody. It is almost closing hour at the museum, but at the last moment, a raven swoops over it and a mysterious lady in a hood enters. The security watching the cameras is distracted for a moment as she enters the doorway through which Laura had entered earlier. Liz heads to the same sculpture which Laura is drawing and creeps up silently to her. Laura, meanwhile, is being spooked on many levels and distracted while Liz steals the sword of Michael and vanishes into shadows. A guard comes to inform Laura that the museum is closing and she observes suspiciously that the sword is missing. She tries to head out but all the doors are locked. She heads back inside to witness Liz unaliving a security guard and runs away from her taking refuge in a confessional closet of the cathedral. There she sees Liz break the glass to the shroud of Jesus while Father Marconi tries to stop her. However, it seems Liz has supernatural strength and easily unalives Marconi as well. While Laura watches in silent horror inside the confession closet. Soon Liz's henchmen arrived and she instructs them to take away the shroud. But while leaving, detects Laura, who is then abducted. Marconi, in his final moments, calls upon Archangel Michael to possess his body and stop the evildoers. And that happens almost instantly. The body is now possessed by Michael who tries to stop Liz and her henchmen from leaving, but fails as the mortal body of Marconi is too weak to use. That seems like a good plot line if you want to save money on special effects. We are then introduced to Dr. Laurent, who shows off the newest product of his research, a young boy who is playing the violin like a pro. His company has been collecting ancient artifacts and the DNA of famous historical people and cloning them using latest technology and the oldest technology known to mankind. He introduces the kid to be none other than Antonio Vivaldi, a 17th century music composer, along with his parents who then walk away. He beckons his assistant to bring in a baby who is none other than Michelangelo, and gets a standing ovation. An auction begins immediately for the baby. Soon, though, Liz has arrived at Lucifer Villa, and she summons Dr. Leron, and we realize he is in cahoots with her. Drive, Leron arrives there and reminisces about a lifetime spent on his research, and that his moment has finally arrived. Meanwhile, Laura wakes up in a glass prison along with other women who are trapped. Like her, there is one woman who can't seem to shut up no matter how much Brenda tries, but Laura uses the same exact words to console her. And miraculously, she shuts up. Soon some dudes arrive to take selfies with the ladies despite their loudest protests. I'm kidding, they weren't selfies. Meanwhile, Michael has regained some strength and heads back inside the cathedral and finds the bishop and his assistant reviewing the security tape. He stands by and watches them watching him get unalived. And when they turn around, they are shocked to see him. He now speaks in a British accent and is angry. He asks about the protectors of the shroud as if that was supposed to mean something to them. He orders them around and then copies the security footage onto a drive. Note that Michael knows how to copy files from a computer onto a thumb drive, so it is expected of him to know how many things work. He is informed about the whereabouts of a retired Cardinal Vincini and then borrows the jacket of one of the holy men. He then goes into the parking lot to search for Marconi's car and is disappointed to see it. Nevertheless, he backs the poopy car into an Audi with contempt in his eyes. He takes a long drive followed closely by a raven while the film also slips in a scene of the evil scientist picking up Jesus' DNA with a dropper. Michael reaches a cottage in the hills where he is confronted by Cardinal Vincini, who doesn't recognize him at first, but soon realizes his true identity. He guides Michael as to the identity of Liz as one of the beasts of Lucifer on shows him where Lucifer Villa is. Cardinal Vincini reveals Lucifer's plan to give birth to a new Jesus and possess his body to return as God to all mankind. Then, without any preparation, they set off for Lucifer Villa. 
Upon reaching the foot of the mountain, they hike. Meanwhile, Laura and the ladies have been fashioning weapons out of their restraints while sharing sad stories. Dr. Leron's computer indicates that Laura's blood is 100% compatible with Jesus, and just then the chains of Lucifer loosen and he can pull out Michael's sword that was holding him captive. Dr. Leron informs Liz about Laura's compatibility, and she tells him to hurry up the process. The dudes from earlier are in for a surprise when they try to fetch the ladies. And just when it seems like Laura and her gang have the upper hand, enemy reinforcements arrive and it was all for nothing. The ladies are dragged away to experiment tables where Laura and Brenda are impregnated with Jesus's DNA. Michael and Vincini reach a cave which is a secret entrance to Evil Villa and suddenly Vincini unalives the raven following them. He then hands his gun and instructs Michael about the path of the cave and bids him luck. Laura and Brenda are dressed as brides and brought out to a gathering of cloaked worshippers and chained to a pillar. Amidst their cries for help, a grotesque beast steps out of the doors of hell and drags them away in chains as the worshippers cheer on. They are placed in a large bird cage and lowered into the bowels of hell, where a couple of stinky demons restrain them while Lucifer probes them with his toxic masculinity. Brenda cannot take Lucifer's toxic masculinity, so she becomes unalive, but Laura turns out to be the stronger woman. She ventures out of the hell doors and is hailed by Liz as the next Divine Mother and reveals to Laura what exactly is inside. While all this had finished happening, Michael, the angel with all his divine powers, finishes walking the tunnel and arrives at Evil Villa and immediately alerts the guards who try to unalive him but fail and he takes them out. Wearing a disguise, he slips into the villa and steals back the Shroud of Jesus and suddenly notices the imprisoned Laura on a screen. Dr. Laurent appears and tries to stop him but gets interrogated instead. Michael sabotages the research facility to blow it up and then chaos ensues. He tries to rescue Laura, but Lucifer senses him and telepathically reaches out. Laura, who thinks he's Marconi but realizes he's not and runs away only to be cornered again and saved by Michael inside a janitorial closet. Michael tries to learn the truth about her pregnancy, but she is in denial. The duo enter the tunnel to escape, but the baby inside Laura is growing fast. They suddenly hear the noise of the monster from earlier and try to escape through a narrow opening. They escape temporarily and Michael stashes the shroud, but the beast catches up and pummels him. Laura is recaptured by Liz and her henchmen. Laura threatens to unalive her baby if Michael is harmed, but Liz tries to brainwash her. Meanwhile, Michael, who has also been captured, uses some of his powers to break free of his chains and opens the hole to hell and jumps in. Michael arrives in hell and is immediately assaulted by demons, but he fights them off. He reaches the spot where Lucifer was supposed to be imprisoned, but is shocked to find him missing. Some super demons arrive and imprison the mighty Michael in the same way he had done to their master. The baby inside Laura is growing rapidly and scaring the poop out of her. Liz tries to console her as she observes the changes occurring to her body. Meanwhile, in hell, a group of hobbits show up and introduce themselves to Michael, who promises to free them if they bring him his sword, but they are interrupted by some demons who abduct some of them. Much to Michael's complaints, the baby starts telepathically communicating with Laura and corrupts her, making nice promises, one of which is to unalive Liz. Liz herself is extremely jealous of Laura for not having been chosen. Laura soon goes into beast mode and squashes two dudes with her newfound strength. Geez, what if they were important to the research? However, she comes to her senses and realizes how evil the baby is. She barricades herself in a janitorial closet again and drinks a harmful liquid in a bid to unalive the life inside herself. Liz is furious but too late to the scene and thinks everything is ruined. But Lucifer gains possession of Laura again and treats Liz poorly. However, assuring her that everything is fine, Lucifer, aka Laura, leaves after discussing plans of eliminating all witnesses after the birth of the baby. She is soon kept inside a special box for further development of her baby, and Lucifer slips out of the baby to hell to gloat about his successes to Michael, who is still imprisoned. However, as Lucifer is about to leave, Michael is shown a particular vision in which Lucifer appears to be restrained within a divine light, and he suddenly realizes this was all part of God's plan and not Lucifer's. The hobbits arrive again and try to free him but fail until one of them starts dragging his divine sword and no sooner because some super demons arrive to stop them. But the hobbits manage to hand Michael his sword. Now, finally, with the remaining special effects budget, the film manages to slip in a few seconds of awesomeness, and Archangel Michael leaves the hobbits promising to return soon. But alas, it seems Michael jumps back into the stinky body of Marconi again and he makes his way to try and rescue Laura once more. He arrives at her special box and tries his best, but is overpowered by one beastly scream. It is Lucifer in Laura's body, and he tries to manipulate Michael to worship him as God and join him in defeating the real God in heaven. But Michael reveals God's great plan of confining Lucifer in the body of the new Christ, and this greatly upsets Lucifer. Liz arrives and Lucifer tries to warn her to abort the mission, but Liz imagines it to be one of Laura's tricks and takes her away. 
a new Jesus is forcibly birthed and Liz proudly presents the baby to all worshippers while Laura is forced down the hellhole. As agreed between Lucifer and Liz earlier, there is a general liquidation of people going on when Michael comes to his senses and escapes. Dr. Leron begs to be a part of the new world order, but Liz denies him. However, she offers him one worship session with his new god before he, too, is struck down by the beast. Michael manages to help Laura before she falls into the hellhole. Laura manages to stop Liz from escaping and now suddenly has the strength to beat up Liz. Liz begs Michael not to harm Lucifer, but Michael reveals that the baby is not Lucifer, but an independent, eternal entity with his own destiny and a new prison for Lucifer. But the gates of hell are now open and all the demons from hell are on their way up. So Michael dispatches Laura to the nearest help in the vehicle and goes to blow up the hellhole before all hell breaks loose. The beast tries to stop him but fails miserably. Meanwhile, Laura has reached Cardinal Vincini with the Shroud of Jesus which Michael had handed during her escape, and all is good in God's kingdom. With Marconi's body gone, Michael shows up in his true form in hell to keep his promise of releasing the hobbits. The ending scene shows Laura and Cardinal Vincini playing with Laura's child while Liz stalks them. But she notices that Lucifer now is a prisoner of the new Jesus. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.